Another story I wanted to cover. There's a new world record for paddlefish. Okay. Ah. And we just our paddlefish. Got, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's ours. No, <laughs> we just got back from Oklahoma recently, uh, and we did a paddlefish trip where we went fishing for paddlefish, and it's an interesting species on so many levels. So we were near Miami, uh, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. um, and while we were we there, were. yeah, I said it right too. They don't. You did right now, Chief yeah. Billy of the Wyandotte Nation. There is a good friend of ours. You know, he's like, I'm proud of you, Kyle. You finally got it right. But um, the Wyandotte town that's there the the river that goes through the town there we would actually catch paddlefish when we would go there we'd stay with chief billy they've got a casino there in wyandotte we'd hit the river and we'd go uh snagging for paddlefish which basically any other type of thing that you could do snagging would be massively illegal so mm -hmm. basically you're running giant treble hooks with dipsy divers which makes the treble hooks go to the bottom and you're attempting to drive over these giant fish snags and them and then you reel them in and barbless do you barbless, do you know yeah. what a paddle fish is it's a, it's, it's got really, a really long yep. okay yeah yep. just just making yep. sure a yeah. lot of people aren't quite They're sure crazy what they are looking fish yeah, yeah they are yeah. Yeah. yeah some people call them spoonbills right um, okay yeah but the big old paddle on their face and on the the paddle is sensors that they can sense uh um Zoo microorganisms zooplankton in the water and mm -hmm. that's what they eat. So because they're filter feeders, you can't catch them like on bait. No matter how much you try, you're not going to get enough zooplankton on a hook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to catch them. So the snagging is the season. And there in uh, uh, Miami, they have a paddlefish conservation organization there. So what happens is when you go out and catch your paddlefish, I think you're allowed one or two a year. I think it's one. It could be one. I know it's, it's one or two a year, and then uh, a lot of the season is closed um, to keeping, it's just catch and release only. So you have to use barbless hooks so you don't injure the fish too much so that they'll be okay when you let them go. And <clears throat> when you catch catch the fish, you take it to the paddlefish research place. They'll do all kind of tests on it to see how old it is, you know, how long it's been there, what ha what year it was hatched. Um, and then the females, they'll take the um, caviar out and then they'll package it and sell it and it's worth a lot of money and that's what funds the conservation of the species itself so everybody checks in their stuff it's actually really interesting the you'll bring them to these re research facilities and it goes you bring you'll send the fish in through one door and it comes out another door on the end of the building and when it comes out it's vacuum sealed packaged <laughs> meat they yeah. do the whole process processing it's for like four, you pretty quick too like it's we like were there five the minutes <laughs> yeah. yeah it's kind of a great setup it, yeah. it's fantastic actually and the best thing about it is the hands-on conservation that's there so by using the eggs to fund it they're not taking any money from anyone the fishermen bring them there to have them clean because they don't have any bones they just have one line of cartilage through the back and cleaning them is a bit confusing for people if they've never done it before you don't want to waste any meat the meat itself is very um I don't know how it would you say like a fibrous fat. Yeah, yeah. Like it's if you got a better description, I love to hear it. If you mixed gelatin and meat, and mm -hmm. then made something that tastes better than it sounds. <laughs> yeah, it's, it sounds brutal, but it's for it's a very soft like mushy type meat. If you were like it, cutting it, you'd have trouble getting a hold of it. Like yeah. if you could squeeze it and probably run it through your fingers if you weren't careful. But it's good. Yeah, but it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's it is depending on the one you get. I mean, if you got this new world record you might not love it but um it's a really interesting fish there i'm sure you're seeing footage of it right now on the screen but they're absolutely beautiful and they taste pretty good but it's just getting one is so weird because when you snag a fish imagine if someone grabbed you by your lip and then someone grabbed you by your arm you'd be able to do a lot more if someone grabbed your arm than if they grabbed your lip mm -hmm. it's the same thing when fighting a fish so i can only imagine what it would have been like. So it was in Keystone Lake, Oklahoma. The fish was 164 pounds. That's incredible. That's insane. No. That's a massive, massive fish. We, we, we've seen the beginning of that cycle when they're tiny. Yeah. You know, this this big. Yeah, we've we held them in our hands like this at the research facility. Really so, cool. And to have them be 160 pounds, that's... That's a good long life. Yeah. yeah no doubt. It's probably yeah. longer than I'll live. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, they're pushing. Are there lifetimes like sturgeon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have real long life uh, lifespans, so they do they do really well. That is yeah. so interesting. I mean, especially with the way we eat, who knows if I'll make it that long? You know yeah. What I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I have a question. So, 
when we were down there, I, I don't recall this ever being talked about, but the season is a thing. But are they migrate? Are they a migratorial? No, no. Well, are I, they always there? Sort of. So like you saw the one I caught. His bill was all jacked up because he tried oh, to yeah. swim through the uh, the dam. Mm. Um, so it was like split like this at the end. Oh, that's right. I ended up letting that one go because it was on the catch and release day too. Yeah. So he's still out there chilling somewhere. Hopefully. I wonder if he can read everything the same, or maybe he gets better. Like, One instead day. of just being zooplankton to the left and right, now he's got a top and bottom thing going for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's he's got, made it better. Yeah, different angles. Um, but, yeah, they, they live in that river system. They they pretty much, they follow the, the um, from what, I, what I've learned, is they follow the water temperature and they follow the depth of the water. So as the rainy season and different times flooding happens, they'll run up the river to sh- something that would be super shallow to breed, and then they'll run back down to the lakes and stuff like that okay. if once the water starts to recede out and the temperatures change. But as far as like a full-on migratory fish, I mean, I guess that's like a mini migration, yeah. Uh, but not a, not full-on migration. But I know on some lakes too, they have them just straight mm-hmm. up in the lake. So obviously they couldn't do it there. Right. But pretty inter- interesting fish. So the world record, 164 pounds. Now this is sort of interesting. The guy's name is Grant Rader, I think R A D E R. Yeah, probably yeah. Raider. Yeah, like Nader. Yeah. <laughs> um, when they used to say like, "Don't be a hater, vote for Nader." Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Grant Raider. Um, so he was actually born with mus- muscular dystrophy. Um, so this was kind of like a really cool experience for him. He was out with a fishing guide. Now the guy that actually had the world record before him uh, was was his fishing guide. Oh wow! So he broke the guide's record with this oh, fish. That's, that's wow! Cool. I like that. I've seen the two largest paddlefish. Yeah, fish. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one and two. That is crazy. Even weirder, the paddlefish that won the world record, it must have been tagged or something, but they didn't specify. The guide caught that same fish in January or February, and they just caught the world. Re- they caught it again, and it's gained so much weight since then. That now it's the world record fish. Oh, it's wow. the same fish. Now it's not the one that had the world record no. before, but it's the same fish that he caught earlier in the year. Yeah, six, six months ago. So it kind of makes you wonder: was it because, you know, was it tagged, or did it have something unique like that paddle? Like I, I mm-hmm. would be able, to, I'd be like, I that's bet, Billy Bob again. I bet <laughs> he was a scar of some sort. Yeah, something where he's you would like, know. Yeah, he's like, that's the one. Interesting. They, yeah. So new world record. And it's cool for that guy because you know just. He got dealt a tough hand, and this is kind of a cool thing. So he's kind of a yeah, he mini, gets his mini celebrity in Oklahoma yeah, right now. Yeah, he gets his – well, I mean, we're talking about it in Michigan I, now. I wonder, yeah. I wonder so. if you get the record, you have to have some, like, world record representative come out and, you know – Oh, you got to have official it. official weight, official scale. Yeah, it's got to all be done. It's not too different. We caught a uh, – we went noodling. I don't know if you've seen that episode yet. I have, actually. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that one Jeffrey caught, um, she was all of 100 pounds, but we don't know <laughs> – for sure, because we dropped the scale in the water on my fish that was like 50, and we thought that was the biggest thing that ever walked. <laughs> yeah. and then this thing was uh, twice the size, but because we didn't have the scale in the water, we didn't know. So in order to get her officially weighed, we'd have to keep her, but she was full of eggs, and that didn't feel like the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So we let her go, and um, it kind of made it like uh, AJ said in the episode too. He's like, it's kind of like folklore now, where it's like, She's out there saying, oh, you know, the world, that you state record may be that, day. but you know what? I know there's a bigger one out there. It's just another fish story. Yeah, exactly. And thankfully, we had it filmed, so <laughs> yeah, it lives on that way. So. Yeah. When you see that thing, though, like when, when Jeff's holding it in the sizzle reel, you, you use the clip for that, and he's holding it like this, and he zoom out, and it's just this. It looks fake. It does. It's like, how is that a real thing, you uh, know? Props it, to our, our prop manager. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it looks fake. The detail in the paint job yep, is so good, yep. though. You got to be in pretty good shape to pull that off, too, right? I mean, kind of the time you spend under the water. And, and he's the, not. It was a wild guy. Fish. I mean, that thing's we were all. That was the last one of the day. It's too. no joke. The guide we were with was talking about people getting their fingers broken and wrists snapped from these because they'll do the alligator roll. Uh, they'll, wow. they'll clamp down your hand and do that alligator roll. It's it's no joke, especially with a fish that's almost a hundred pounds. Yeah. Like, you got to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't explain to you, like, the anticipation. Like, the water is all muddy, so you can't see a thing. And, like, you feel a hole, and you know what you don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know whether I'm smart enough to not stick my hand in a beaver hole or not. Yeah. I don't know true. if I'm smart enough to know what an alligator uh, – 
tortoise looks like, or you know, I, I, I like, I don't know what the, you know, I don't know what's in there, but it's probably a fish. But then if it is a fish, it's gonna bite me, and I don't know how big it is. So like, you psych yourself up, and then your friends are making fun of you. So you're like working yourself up, and you're like, okay, and then you dive down, and you reach, and you're like, everything in your body's like. You don't reach your hand into <laughs> holes that you don't know what's in there where you probably will get bit and you can't see. And they're like, here and I go. And you're underwater yeah. holding your breath. Yeah. But if you come up with without getting bit, you're going to get made fun of. So it's like, you know, what do you what is <laughs> You're going to get made fun really of. Really high pressure yeah. situation. Yeah. So that, it was exciting. Is that something you'd be into? Uh, I, I would take a lot of, uh, you know, peer pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There it is. The, the peer pressure That's the helps. key to it. You got to have your good buddies there so they know how to exactly turn your yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. buttons and exactly. get you going down there. So you you guys have done such a good job with uh, uh, making a RAM good for outdoors men and women through different features and stuff like that. So with that, I know you don't have a ton of hunting and fishing experience, but what is it that you like to do in the outdoors? Um, our family, you know, we like to go camping. So we do a lot of camping, which kind of opens the doors to uh, a lot of what I call ad hoc trips, right? I mean, you can go for a hike or you can go fishing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Especially here in Michigan, there's just a ton of places that you can drop a line and a lot of great state parks and things of that nature. So primarily, that's kind of what the, our, our family leans towards. Nice, nice, nice. Now, you've got four daughters. I do. Okay, so... You're explaining to me that you're taking uh, five women camping, <laughs> and so you're packing them all in. Do you guys have a camper? Do you do the tents, or what do you do? Yeah, we broke down a few years ago, got the camper. Nice. And, uh, that little, makes it a lot easier. It does. Acknowledgement to having the, the girls and making life a little bit easier. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> where, where do you like to go in Michigan? So we love the west side of the state. Okay. You, know, you can get close to Lake Michigan there and enjoy all the beaches. And then we also go up north as well, um, up in the Petoskey, Charlevoix area. Nice. Just Kind of between the west side and, and up north, those are our two hot spots. Are you familiar with, like, Cadillac area? A little bit. Okay, so uh, just north of Cadillac is where our hunting camp is. Oh, right. So yeah. we've got about 500 acres up there that we do a lot of hunting and fishing and stuff like that. We actually have uh, um, the youth hunt coming up. So if you or your daughters, if you want to get one of your daughters out to do a youth hunt or something like that, you guys are welcome to come up. And cool. If they're into that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, if, they, if they'd be interested. I know it seems like, though, that the, the female demographic in hunting is the fastest growing demographic uh, in the outdoor Which is industry. really interesting. Yeah. Your sister, I mean, look at your sister. That's true. You she know? started from you. But she also grew up in it. Like, sure. that's what just a thing our family did. So it's easier for her. If you're not necessarily growing yeah. up in it every season, I can see how it'd be tough for a girl to pull that trigger. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I think a lot, of, a lot of young dads these days, you know, they'll look at their son and their daughter kind of on equal footing and say, hey, this is my passion, so I want you to have a chance to experience it. Definitely. And I just right. think that's more natural now than maybe it was in previous generations. Definitely. That's a good point. That's how my dad was. I remember, um, like, when we would have shooting competitions and stuff in the backyard, Laurel tend to beat me. Um, she was three years older, but she tend to beat me with um, the um, rifle shooting. Really? But from the early age, I, I smoked my – Dad, everyone, anyone who wanted it was getting it with archery. That was like my thing. Huh. So I just was always better with it, which is weird because I really am more of a shotgun hunter in general, but it's right. just kind of how it worked out. Um, do you spend any time up in the UP? No. No. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a long drive, especially with a camper. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, right. you're like just as close to West Virginia as you are the UP from where yeah. we're sitting. <laughs> it's so wild to think that's still part of Michigan. You know, right. It shows how big this state is and how much opportunity there is. So. Yeah. Property values are interesting. If you want to buy like 400 acres for 40 grand, you can. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's beautiful up there. I, if if there was more opportunity there, I would love to live there, minus the snow. It's unspoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah it. Definitely, that still is. Mm-hmm. Perfect Untouched. word for it. Yeah. So. Get-